In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace C.M.A. A selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Sunday, the ninth of April, twenty twenty three, Easter Sunday, the day for our Alleluia. Why are we Alleluia ring? We are Alleluia ring because we have every reason to be joyful because God has made us understand that evil does not last. God has made us understand by coming back to life that even whatever is dead in our lives can come back to life. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Albert Magare Nyamatari Tabaka from Kisi, Kenya, celebrating his birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Felistas Mwansa from Lusaka, Zambia, celebrating her golden birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. Catherine Mitungwi from Lilongwe, Malawi, whose mother celebrates her birthday today, takes for us the second reading. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Peter Paul Maza from Bwea, Cameroon. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant we pray that we will keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 10, verse 34a, 37 to 43. In those days... Peter opened his mouth and said, You know the word which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him manifest, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is Psalm. Psalm 118, this one to two. 15c to 17, 22 to 23. And the response is, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia.
Second reading. Seek the things that are above where Christ is. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Brethren, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Gospel Acclamation First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7b and 8a. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival in the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John 
chapter 20 from verse 1 to 9. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have led him. Peter then came out with the other disciples, and they went towards the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen clothes lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen clothes lying, and the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have to understand why the passage we have from Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 is chosen to be used on an important day like this. Why was not St. Paul who was deeper in theology taken rather than a fisherman to tell us about the resurrection story? Oh, because Peter is going through transformation. Peter is going through conversion. Not only Peter, but even Cornelius. Resurrection is the time for us to change our mindset. Resurrection is the time for us to change the way we relate to one another. This is the message of today's word. Who was a Jew to the core who never wanted to entertain pagans is told to go to the house of Cornelius. And there he discovers that Cornelius is ready to receive Christ because he had received that revelation and that he was ready to become a believer. He had knowledge about Judaism. He knew about Christ. He knew because he was a Roman, and here is something that happens that makes not only Cornelius to change his mind, to be converted, but also Peter to be converted, who comes to know that salvation after the resurrection of Christ is open to all. Wow, for that reason. Peter now understands the focus is not on Saturday. The focus now is on Sunday, the first day of the week, because on that day the Lord rose from the dead. That is the center of our worship. That is the day on which all the other days revolve around Sunday, the day of the sun. When humanity came to understand that death is not the end of everything. Peter, in his first discourse to a Gentile, met the resurrection, the basic doctrine, and the crowning proof of the truth of the Christian faith. As St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, if Christ has not risen, then is our preaching, then too is our faith. But he has been raised from the dead, and this becomes the source of our strength, the source of our courage. What we have to understand is that things only started changing after the resurrection of Christ. When Jesus died on the cross and they heard him say, it is finished. They felt finished. That's what I was preaching on Good Friday. 
They felt finished. And they even forgot about all the words Christ had taught them. When misfortune befalls us, we even forget that there is something more that God has spoken to us. We even forget the promises of God. They locked themselves into the room of the Last Supper for fear of the Jews. And two of them had set off for home on the Sunday morning downhearted at the master's failure and others were waiting for an opportunity to slip out of the city quietly but the resurrection changed all this the unexpected the unhoped for happened even the most skeptical of them all doubting thomas was eventually convinced of its reality had they been hoping for it or even thinking of it, there might be some reason to suspect it was only an hallucination. The result of their wishful thinking, but the very opposite was the case. They were hard to convince even when it happened. And this explains to us that truly Christ rose. These people were not having hallucinations. No, it happened. Even Mary Magdalene in the gospel passage of today, that intimate moment of this woman who came to the tomb early while it was still dark, while the forces of evil were still in charge, and so that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have led him. She experienced that. She experienced the empty tomb. This was not a hallucination. No, this was real. This happened. This was something she experienced. She had to make that first trip, which was a way towards the understanding of the message of Christ. In John, people move in stages. Look at the woman at the well. She saw a man. You, sir, a man, a Jew. You, a Jew, asking me, a Samaritan, for water. The next stage was, now I know you are a prophet. The next stage was, you are the Messiah. Stages of transformation happen in our lives. It is not at the first instance of meeting Christ that we come to know the whole truth about him. No, we have to keep running. Go and report even the little you know. Go and share the little you know. Because in sharing you build your own faith. And then journey with the others as you share with them the come with you and you experience something else. Mary shared with the disciples. Peter and John came back to the tomb and they both ran, but the disciple outran Peter. The disciple whom Jesus loved outran Peter and stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloth lying there. But he did not go in. Why? Because this disciple whom Jesus loved had respect for authority. This disciple whom Jesus loved, despite the fact that he was a man of faith, he did not underrate those who were leaders of the church. A true man of God, a true woman of God respects the leaders of the church, even if they may have little faith compared to you, compared to others, they should be respected. They should be allowed to go in first. Peter went in, inspected, he came out and he had his own experience. He only looked at the structures there. But the beloved disciple went in, seeing an empty tomb, he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. 
the disciple whom Jesus loved went in. He saw the empty tomb and he believed. We do not have to see Jesus in front of us for us to believe that he is here. That empty tomb is telling us something. That Jesus is alive. We only see the linen lying on that altar. We don't see him. But he's seen in that Eucharist. Which is more like the empty tomb. Because you are not seeing anything other than the physical. But behind that physical is the spiritual. Christ himself who walks with us. Who wants us to build our faith. To keep believing that he's walking with us. That is the Paschal lamb which has been sacrificed as we heard in the second reading of today. And therefore we celebrate the festival. Not with the old living, the living of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Saint Paul makes that unleavened bread, that Eucharist, as signifying the resurrection. That is why the altar is actually that empty tomb where we meet Christ whom we don't see. Like the beloved disciple, we meet him there. And when we meet him there, everything changes about us. When we meet him there, we don't remain the same. Malice goes away, hatred goes away, unforgiveness goes away, discrimination goes away, tribalism goes away, territorialism goes away. We are not restricted by territories and when our brother is in trouble, when our sister in Malawi is in trouble, and when our brother in Mozambique is in trouble, we stretch our hand to help. This shows we are sons and daughters of the resurrection. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Easter Sunday to you. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh.